idea from that text that in which I can find a misunderstanding, in which I can find some difficulty of interpretation, right? So this is one of the steps, this is one of the steps to make us find the way to reach a research question. And the fourth point that I put here, it's a troubling question that exists in the scholarly literature. That's true. It's a troubling question that I have while as I am a reader. It may be a troubling question that I can find to other students while I'm reading and my mind is in process. I can think, oops, attention, attention. I think at this point is a little difficult to understand the words, the vocabulary. Maybe from this point, I can elaborate a research question. So this is one of the, the beginning of the feeling. How do I find a, a research questions? Is everything okay? I guess it's it's okay. So, what is a research question? I put here some definitions, right? So that when we feel lost, oh my God, what is a research question? What does, what did Monica say about it? So it's here. Research question is simply a question you want or is trying to answer while you are doing your research on the topic or write a research paper. A paper is just a paper while you have a research question. The target, the target of your paper is to have a question and to have the answer to the question. This is the big challenge that we are going, we are going to see today. You could ask me, but Monica, can I write a research paper without a question? You can write a paper without a question, but the name is not a research paper. Uh, maybe something like uh, a critical analysis. But when you are, when you have the courage to write a research paper, you have to raise a discussion. This is the point of a research paper. The definition for a research paper is to raise a discussion between the readers and me. Second definition, it should be as specific and detailed as possible, right? This is a very important point to consider. When you write the question, you have to go straight to the point. You have to be very specific. What are you going to ask? Well, who is the subject? The year, the country, the people, the action. Very detailed. Sometimes it is necessary to make two questions. Listen to me. Sometimes it is necessary to make two questions to answer a complex topic. You do not have to create a very complex topic, but if you feel like, if you can face it, go ahead. But sometimes our research questions, they are so long that they need two questions to be answered, okay? Before you ask me, I put here, you can elaborate two questions to be answered. And definition number three that I put here, the purpose of your research is to find the answer to the research question. That's true. You create a question and the challenge, your target is to answer the question. Before you ask me, I will say something. Monica, but if during, uh, in the, Monica, if in the middle of the process, from the middle to the end, I discover that my answer 
to the question is wrong. Do I have to write everything again? No, you don't have to write. You don't need to write everything again. I have read some, some papers, mainly those who deal with the people studying society, studying a specific uh, um, population, that during the process of writing the research paper, uh, the population decreases, the population moves, the government changes, things happen, nothing is fixed. So, during the process from the middle to the end, or in the end, you can say, uh, we have to say that our hypothesis that we tried to, to answer in the beginning of the paper is wrong. And then you explain why it's wrong. It's wrong because the population moved, the population uh, changed the idea, the population does not want to contribute to this research topic, this research paper. It can happen when you are working with uh, people, population, a specific group of people, all of a sudden they can say, we don't want to contribute anymore to your research. Sorry, so this, is a, this is a situation that we have to, to think about it. Okay, great. No questions, huh? And then I put more two, I, I put here one, two, three, four, and five, five definitions so that you can put in your mind, understand very well what is a research question. question. You can ask me, but can I create a research question in all subjects? Yes, you can. You can use in science, sociology, mathematics, literature, medicine, physics, uh, engineering, psychology, anywhere in which there is a text, right? There is an article. You can. Um, raise a, a discussion and write about it. And the last definition, it happens when we, we, you and I, we, we all together, are wondering about our studies, readings and analysis. Yeah, this is the nest. This is the place to where the question comes. It's from our analysis, from our readings, our evaluation. Let's imagine that I read a text. Let's imagine. Let's imagine that I read this text three times, okay? It's good to, to read three, four times. And when I finished reading it, I had some discussions. There are some points that I don't agree. There are some points that uh, I feel insecure. Or there are some points that I believe they, they deserve a better understanding. So when I think that this point deserves a better understanding, voila, this is the beginning of the creation of a research question. Do you have any idea? I have a question for you. And please, would you please open your microphone and talk to me? Do you have any idea? I know you have, right? You are great students. I, I, I have no idea uh, if you are. Are you graduate students or postgraduate students? Can you tell me? Please. Hi, Monica. I am an undergraduate student of law. I'm You are what? Are you graduate students? No, graduate I am a under no? under. I am pursuing my LLB, so that's why I I am a undergraduate student. Uh, all right, so 
Can you tell me, could you give me any suggestion how to formulate a research question? Imagine that I'm your professor, okay? And I tell everybody. <clears throat> Suprabat, Suprabat, there is a homework for today. I want that everybody write a research question for next class, next uh, uh, Thursday, okay? How could you formulate it? How could you formulate it? Would you cry? Would you try to find a research? How? Can you tell me? How would you do it? Maybe I think uh, man, we can go with the uh, research about the topics, uh, which are uh, there is a gap between the research and the present scenario. We can go with the same and have do some research about the current scenario. Great, yes, that's that's true. It's um, it's the beginning. Uh, I think we'll have to go with a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. And uh -huh. like we'll initially stick with the null hypothesis. We'll have an assumption with that. Then we'll move and ultimately prove that it will be the alternative. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, my first thing is that first we need to understand whether it should be in a multiple choice question or it would be a subjective type uh, according to the research topic and then we could define our, you know, question set. Great. That's true. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, to me, okay, this is Sister from Uganda. Uh, to me, on um, how to formulate a que research questions, you should determine the requirements of what you need and also you should choose that you can get it from the topic that you're trying to assess and also you need to narrow down your question or your topic to a level that you are able to get a question and in that case you need to make sure that uh, you understand uh, on how you can conduct those preliminary researches so that you're able to gather the whole information and then come up with exact research questions that you're going to use for collecting your information from the field wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you too. Anybody else would you like to to give your opinion, show your voice? We all have the opportunity to speak here. Hi, uh, this is Shurjava. I'm from India. I'm uh, finally a, a student in medicine. Uh, so I think um, first uh, we will uh, we should be able to uh, figure out which area, which specific area we would like our research topic to be about. Because, uh, for example, if I say medicine itself, that also will have that has an immense, huge, uh, vast uh, spectrum of topics, or you know uh, that you can fix. So first, fix the area you want to go around. And then I think go through what are the topics which are uh, in, uh, interesting you as well as which are already out there. And then as already uh, someone said that see the gap between what, uh, what, uh, what is already there and what is missing uh, like with the present scenario. And uh, if you can figure out a way to gap that bridge or study that gap. So I think that's how you start, how the thought process starts. And then the rest, I think ma'am is going to teach us how to go about it. Yes, the, the key words, right? Scenario, uh, the gap, yeah, some, you said now the gap, there is a gap inside the paper. So we need you to fulfill this gap. And that's what I'm going to tell now. So congratulations to everybody who, who gave your opinion, your suggestion. So I put here some hints for a research question, a research problem, it's the same, they are synonym. How to formulate it? So I put here uh, seven hints. Number one, what inspires me? When I say inspire, I'm talking about some aspects such as is the social aspect social problem, environmental aspects, 
theoretical problems, political problems, financial problems, health problems, right? As the girl now who is who, who talked right now that is studying medicine. So I have uh, the number two. Choose interesting questions, clear and focus. As I said before, go straight to the point. Who is the subject, the place, the people, the year? Go straight to the point. Number three is very, very important. Who cares about it? Is your question important? Is your discussion important? Who cares about it? So you have to construct interesting questions that calls the attention of the audience. If not, in my opinion, nobody wants to read the, the paper. Because what makes us read a paper? Our curiosity, our interest. So I find the interest in interesting questions, in interesting titles, right? So um, aspect number four, how can you demonstrate that your solution is good, right? So when you write the question, you have the hypotheses, right? That are the solutions to the question. But can you demonstrate them? So you have to think about it. Aspect number five, not too easy to answer that's true you you cannot uh, write uh, research questions that are very very easy because everybody knows the answer okay so uh, it doesn't matter if you are graduate students or postgraduate students do not write do not elaborate easy questions because your paper will lose the value Okay, we we'll lose the qualification in some terms. I know that when we are starting, it's our first time, it can happen. But uh, I don't know how things are in India when you write a paper and if you are inside the university, your professor will help you during this process of elaborating an article here in Brazil. Uh, in my university, we help students during all the process of the paper, okay? So aspect number six, not too difficult. That's true. <laughs> it's not easy, huh? It cannot be easy and not too difficult because if you put a very, very difficult question, the person when reads will say, oh, come on. I, I'm tired. This is so difficult to understand. I don't want to read anymore. So try to find the equilibrium, right? The equilibrium between the easy and the difficult. And the most important thing, a question in which you can find a solution. And aspect number seven, capable of research. Of course, uh, you have to write. You have to elaborate a research question in which you, you will find a source, in which you will find the material to, to read and find the answer. If not, forget it and formulate other uh, research question. And then I say, are you looking for a strong research question? Because this is important. Are you looking for a strong research question? So I will show you some characteristics that I found inside Scrib BR. This uh, graphic is not mine, okay? I took it from Scrib BR. But it's so interesting that I thought, I guess this, this is great. That's great to show them. So we have here uh the characteristics of a strong research question so in the center we have a strong research question and then we have some uh, characteristics necessary let's talk about the feasible what's 
What is feasible? Feasible is something practical, possible. I have to, to wrote, I have to study about something possible. If not possible, if there is no material about it, I won't find the source, so I can't write about it. As simple as that. Original, okay. Uh, try not to copy others' ideas. Try to have your own uh, question, your own elaborated questions. This is good. Relevant. What I mean by relevant, pertinent, important, important to society, important to medicine, to physics, to mathematics, psychology, modern language, literature. It's relevant to a field of study. Complex and arguable. What I mean by complex and arguable? It means that it's difficult. It's a challenge but i can face because there is material that will answer my question i am protected with the material that i found during my research talking about research the next topic is researchable researchable is something that we can study about and make a research focused Center, you must be centered to your target. My target is this, so my question will be about this. A point, a specific point. I have a target and my target is to answer this question. And specific, right? So that everybody can understand what is my question about. So. When we finish this course and you feel insecure about it, don't worry. Take a look at this graphic and it will be it will help you a lot to to understand, to keep in mind uh, the step by step during the process of uh, the construction of a research question. Okay, so I brought some uh, examples, right? I brought some uh, examples for you from my researches in Brazil. And I took some of the questions and I brought to you. The structure, how, how is it constructed? It is always written as questions. You have to put interrogation marks if possible. If you are writing in an indirect way, uh, this paper wants to ask that. So the presence of this conjunction, this connective that can eliminate the interrogation mark. But if you are writing your question just like that, with the two points, okay? You can start the question to put interrogation mark. How has Brazil been acting to guarantee women's security? I put two apostrophe, I have to eliminate one. Uh, when you write a research question, I think it's a good idea to use the use of how. How, what, um, maybe uh, when, but most of the time is how, uh, what, uh, when, what, what's the effect, how did they react, how can we, something. So the second question, how does the United Nations think about solving the sexual violence problem against women during the conflict? This is a question to be answered. I have the, the WH question, how, what, when, who's. I have the subject, Brazil, United Nations, 
and the verb think about and the complement of the verb solving the sexual violence problem against women during the conflicts this is a very nice question question number three what is the effect of russia's war to indian economy take a look at these questions they are just example i could um get them better okay what is the effect of russia's war which war right this is so open so this question is not the best one what's the effect of russia's war i i in my opinion it's necessary to put the year to indian economy when it's necessary to put when question number four how did east timor people face identity problems traumas during the time of indonesia's invasion this is a question I'm working right now. Yesterday, I went to um, a congress, a workshop, uh, countryside here from my city, and my student uh, talked to the audience about how people from Timor East faced the problems with colonization because Timor East was, was colonized, was invaded by five different nationalities uh, japan australia uh, portugal indonesia so with all these in australia too with all these five invasions that i can remember now the people face the problem with their identities because they have to to swallow the australian culture the Japanese, the Portuguese, the, uh, the Indonesian culture. So how did they face this? This is a very interesting question that my student and I are, are writing right now. And we have until July next year to finish. Uh, we have here uh, every year our university opens uh, an edital for the students and they receive uh, just uh, um, some money to help them. The best students, they receive this scholarship to, to take a Xerox copy or to travel, right? And next year, June, July, we have to show to some professors and defend our ideas every year this this is how my university process and teaches our students to write research questions very well i wrote here more uh, research question and at the end uh, let me take here a piece of paper because at the end uh, right Research questions. I'll ask you a task, an assignment. So, uh, other research question. How does the short novel disease look? Did you pay attention that I put uh, some questions about politics? I work in international relations courses, so my questions are dealing with uh, uh, economies, society, politics. And now I put a question about literature. There is a, a very interesting author. She died, she's American, Toni Morrison. And she wrote a novel, a very nice novel called Beloved that I worked with. So I elaborated this, my student elaborated this question. How does the short novel Beloved by Toni Morrison deal, deals with the brutalized and fragmented memory in the life of a black woman towards the adver adversities of colonial power? This is a very, very long question. Huh? And uh, keep in mind, 
when you write the research question, you have immediately to have to find the possible, the possible answer to your question. Okay? Attention, attention, attention. Let me return to this uh, question by beloved Toni Morrison. You see, I used uh, strong words, impact words, such as brutalized, fragmented, memory, black woman, so colonial power. So I believe that uh, these impact words, they, they give um, a strength. Yes, I guess this is the word. It gives a strength to the, to the paper. And I put here attention. Of course, all the, the my my lecture today, you need to have attention. But I think this is very important. Theme and question must be connected. Of course, it must be connected. I have to understand what is the theme, what is my title. When I have the title, then I will pick up the keywords, and from that keywords, I have to make a connection with my research question. For example, this question about Beloved by Toni Morrison. I picked up some important moments in the novel, like brutalization, fragmentation of memories. Uh, all the short novel is about colonial power, Toni Morrison was a black woman. She's writing about black women. So you can pick up these strong words or verbs or adjectives. And from then, you can uh, construct your question. Okay? Let's go ahead. So theme of a research is the subject that we want to prove or develop. That's true. Our question is totally connected to the theme, to the theme of, of our study, okay? It has a difficulty without solution that will solve. Have you ever heard about Sherlock Holmes, the great English detective, Sherlock Holmes? So, you are going to be a Sherlock Holmes. You are going to elaborate a question that there is no solution, and you will find the solution and prove it. And prove it. Okay? You can ask me, but Monica, if I'm elaborating a question that nobody asked, it, and I need to find a solution. But if, if I don't find the solution inside the, the books, listen, this is very important. The moment you create a question, it does not mean that you will find the answer inside the books. This is very, very important, guys. When you create the question, it doesn't mean that 100% of the time you will find the answer inside the books, inside the dissertations and the papers, PhD papers or whatever. No, you can use the power of deduction. I talked about deduction on the other section, I thought during July or August, I'm not, I don't remember, but I gave some classes about the power of deduction, it's part of the methodology. What is a deduction? Uh, you see a situation, right? People are arguing, for example, here in Brazil, I don't know if you are aware, we are facing a very difficult moment in Brazil because uh, we had elections some weeks ago and according to the votes uh luis inacio lula won the election 
But on the other side, we have the President Bolsonaro, right? Bolsonaro doesn't want to accept that he lost the election. People are saying that the election was a complete mistake. The, the, the counting of the votes was wrong. All the, the journals, the international journals are talking about it. So what happened? People are on the streets and making noise and uh, um, stopping the railways. Nobody can go, nobody can come in. It's like the beginning of a, a little civil, not a civil war, but the situation is not good. How can we solve this situation in this memorial, memorial time in Brazil? I have never seen something like that in my life. So this situation is a very good point to, to start to create a research question. I don't have the answer because it's not on the books. No, the books won't tell me, ah, the situation to solve, you, you do this, you... there is no recipe. Right, there is no recipe. So I can write a question such as How is the Brazilian population dealing with the, the results of election in Brazil? And from the deduction that I see every day on the streets, during the, the newspapers, during the documentaries, I can find my answer according to the deduction. Right, because there isn't a recipe, there isn't a book that will give me the solution. Although I would like to find peace. We need peace in Brazil. That is something that we don't have right now. And so this is a very complex question to answer and interesting to read about. So these exotic questions, do you understand me? Exotic questions. The nowadays moment, this is a very good point to, if you can discover a question from the, the moment right now, our modern time, the real life situation just now, great for you. This will help you uh, to succeed on your article. So let's go ahead. So theme of a research is the subject that we want to prove or develop, I told you. It has a difficulty without solution that we will solve. That's right. We will be detectives. We are going to be all Sherlock Holmes trying to find a solution. So what is the solution? The solution, technically, academically, we call it hypothesis. And what is a hypothesis? Once the problem is established, we must propose an answer. Yes, I talked to you just right now. It is a statement that we can use to answer our research question. That's true. This statement can have two, three lines, four lines, okay? Not a very long answer, but can have three, four lines. It's okay. It is a guess. You see, guys, it's a guess because we don't know if it is the real solution, right? So it is a guess, a probable solution. Answer to a research question problem, right? That during the, the, the work, during your writing, you will try to convince me, to convince the reader that that is the, the solution to the question. Research question is an interrogative sentence. That's true. While hypothesis is an affirmative detailed sentence. That's true. Every time we have a question, we have an answer, and the answers are in the affirmative. It is possible to verify. Yes, it's possible to prove. I can prove that my answer is correct. What about the importance and function? Well, it is a tool of work from theory. That's true. You have, you can use the power of deduction. That's true. But 
before deduction, you have the theory here. You, you wrote, you have the knowledge, you have the experience to face your answer and to go ahead. Number two, it can be tested and judged as true or false, as I said before. It can be true, but all of a sudden, things can change, and in the end, you say, all right, we unfortunately, we discovered that our hypothesis is false due to, and then you explain, unfortunately, our hypothesis is false because, and you explain, and it's okay, no problem, don't worry, don't cry, okay? Don't feel a terrible person because your uh, hypothesis all of a sudden became false. It is a powerful instrument to the progress of science. That's true because science wants uh, challenges. Science wants new things to talk about. We don't want the same old things that we already know. So when you write your question, um, try to create new things. Right? New questions that will help scholars to go ahead with their research. And definition number four, it shows the way of the investigation, indicating what to look for. That's true. I, I believe that the, the creation of a research problem, it's very good because you will never get lost. Once you have your objectives, your research questions, you will go ahead. You, you know the way, you know the path to go because it's there in front of you. And there are more things to talk about. See, it coordinates the already known facts. Yes, you have the already known, but I'm bringing the what's not known. All right, this is the challenge, this is the award. That's the award when you have the already known with the things you do not know. It's present during all the steps of the investigation. As I said before, that's true. It's present all the time. It guides the investigation and it develops the scientific knowledge. All right. And now I ask you, please open your microphones and tell me how, let me shut up my dog. Sorry. How to formulate a hypothesis? Can you give me your suggestions? Can you open the microphone? Ma'am, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Uh, um, Ma'am, actually, uh, hypothesis depend upon imaginations. <clears throat> Depends on the imagination, that's true. The deduction that I say, I, I use the, the deduction, your imagination, the logic, right? You can use the logic. It's and the result. Rationality also. Sorry? Rationality. Rationality. Yeah. Excellent. Where the relationship is true between two or more variables. Repeat, please. Whether there is a relationship between two variables. To check that. Mm. What else? Anybody? Okay. Uh, uh, I, will, I will say uh, you can formulate to state a problem that you are trying to solve and make sure that the hypothesis is clear a little bit. So in that case, we try to write it if it is if it is then a statement or with definable or defined variables. 
Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We can as well uh, use uh, a court of law to determine a claim, whether guilty or not guilty. Hmm. All right. Anybody else? Yes? Come. Anybody yes. else? Hi. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Comparison two studies. As you mentioned it also, but uh, the same is that with, if we comparison two studies, then we find out the hypothesis. Well, I didn't listen very well. Your voice is breaking. It's easy to pieces. Actually, there but... is some network issue. But thank you for for your words. So, uh, I'm, besides I'm writing in the chat. Ah, okay, you will write in the chat. I'll take a look later. So, formulating a hypothesis. Uh, I will see what you wrote very soon. Uh, you have familiar knowledge of the situation. Okay. All the research you have knowledge. It's really necessary to have knowledge of the situation observation of the situation of the facts comparison with other studies and to see the connection between this is so so important you have to observe it's necessary to have knowledge compare with other studies and see the connection between them and the deduction that is your personal experience with the situation you can use your experience and uh, and uh, talk yes who wants to talk no nobody okay i will go ahead great um what about now i talked about formulating hypothesis okay and later, I'll ask you a, a question. Now, I want to talk about qualitative research. Do you know what is a qualitative research? Can you explain to me? Hmm? When you are writing the research, there is a methodology. You have the qualitative and the quantitative research what's the difference between them do you know would you like to try some quantitative research can be measured and verified but qualitative research are factors which causes a thing to happen so you we cannot exactly measure it that's true very well anybody else wants to uh, quantitative research basically talks about like the impact of a independent variable on a dependent one. Quantitative. Thank you. Okay, qualitative uh, can also mean uh, collecting and analyzing non-numerical data, whereas quantitative involves the collection and analyzing of uh, numerical data. Uh-huh. Let's see. Uh, qualitative research. It's a kind of approach that studies subjective social phenomena from human being behavior. So if you want to study human behavior, human in society, uh, aspects of the reality of the human being, so you can you will study the qualitative method the qualitative research so aspect number one it's a kind of approach that studies subjective social phenomena from human being behavior aspect number two tries to study aspects from reality that cannot be quantified in terms of statistics if you want to talk about the statistics and uh, numbers and charts and tables, you go to quantitative, right? Here, we are studying the values of the human beings, the values of a social group. 
We are going to observe the behavior, the culture inside a specific place and a specific time. So that's what says aspect number three. It studies the values of human beings on a determined social group, observing the culture, the place, the time, the, the surrounding, the, the influences from the outside. It looks for explanations, explanations to, uh, to the understanding in terms of human beings. The results are ideas, are experiences. So this is the qualitative research. But how can we make it? How are we going? Okay, I understood you, Monica. I understand what, what you say. But how am I going to construct it? First of all, define your object of study. What I want to study. Okay. In my case, my student and I, when I study the people from East Timor uh, during the invasion of Indonesia. So this is my object of study. The East Timor people. Such bibliography, you have to make um, excavation. That I love this word, excavation, everywhere to find the material, the bibliography, the, the best references about it. Aspect number three, define the methodology and the instrument of data collect. That's true. I'm going to talk it uh, very soon. What's your methodology? Um, it's the survey, it's action research, what you're trying to do. It's a case study. Follow a script and chronogram. On the other section in August, I talked very well about it, about the script and about the chronogram. I don't know if there is anyone in this class that was present in the other one. If the person is here, I guess she will remember, the, the person or the guy will remember. We have a chronogram to follow. We need to have discipline. Okay, June and July, I'm gonna do this. August, September, I'm gonna do this. So if you follow, if you are, a disciplined person, an organized person, my congratulations. You will write easily, uh, with no stress, uh, no headaches, because you are keeping the time. Number five, collect data. Of course, it's necessary to collect data. Uh, we have to read a lot. We have to read a lot. And then analyze. That's true. We have to analyze the situation. After all we read, we have to analyze. If we don't analyze, we are not researchers, right? Because what does a researcher do? He analyzes the situation. He reads and he has his own point of view. That's what we need to have, our own point of view. If not, you're just a reader, nothing else than a reader. All right? Great. Now let's see the types. We have the ethnographic research. We have the case study. We have the action, action research. So what's the difference between each one of them? And you choose which one you prefer, okay? You choose which, which is the most adequate to your research. Well, if you choose the ethnographic research, it is a methodology used by anthropology. Oops, there is a, a grammar mistake. It is a methodology used by anthropologists to study society or the social group. That's true. I have one student who she's going to 
I don't know if this is the word in English, the verb. She's going to, to defend. She's going to, to an audience with three professors. They are going to argue her work. And she's studying about the diplomatic international relation, interna international relation in Egypt, in Egypt. Old Egypt through the Kadesh Treat. It's a very difficult to word, right? She's, she's analyzing the international relations in Egypt through the Kadesh Treat. So she's going to read a, a lot. She read because she finished. She's going to defend at the end of this month. But uh, uh, she had to read a lot about uh, the social groups, the, the pharaohs, the dynasties, and the kings and the queens, uh, specific groups. So what, is, what kind of research is she preparing? She is preparing uh, ethnographic research because she's dealing with people with a treat dealing with some wars some civil wars some kings the reigns of the kings uh, all of this deals with social group aspect number two it tries to understand traditions beliefs values from that collectivity that's true one thing I like to study very much here in Brazil is the study of the Indian people in the Amazon forest. Okay, so you can pick up a specific group, like we have a tribe called Yanomami, and they are vanishing because of the white man capitalism. So nowadays in Brazil, we have written a lot about the Indians, the disappearance of the Indians in the Amazon forest. So we try to understand their traditions, their beliefs, their values, their surrounding area, the atmosphere. So this is a very good example of ethnographic research. And aspect number three, it is necessary to collect data, observe, and interview. Of course, guys, if you select ethnographic research, you, you have to go there if possible, right? Sometimes, uh, for example, in my, in my situation, I would like to study uh, the, Indian, the Indian girls, but it's very expensive. An airplane ticket to India, Jesus, is so expensive that I cannot afford. So uh, I cannot observe. So I have to collect data. If it is possible, you can go to the place and observe people and go with your paper and your notes and interview the paper and a, a, a record and record their voices and film if they give permission. So <clears throat> uh, this is the, the situation of those who, who use the ethnographic research. If you ask me, Monica, what's your opinion about it? I like it very much. I like it because most of our research in international relations, they are ethnographic. We study about people, subjects, periods of time, the wars. Uh, in my case, I don't like very much to study the wars, but I like to study the behavior of the people, the progress of the, the community, okay? Great. We are going to, to the end of it. The second case, the second uh, type of study, of research, is the case study. What is a case study? It tries to analyze a specific situation in a profound and complete, oops, I have to remove the E, in a complete manner. Case study. I can pick up a specific situation 
a problem in the harbor, for example. Let's think about an economic problem in the harbor, Suez Harbor. They have a problem there with the, um, the transportation of products. This is a case study, something uh, that is happening uh, with an organization, something big, and you, you pick up that case and you try to understand what is happening there. So now we are not dealing with people, but de dealing with a case, something profound, an action that happened and you wanted to study it. So the object of a study may be a social group or an organization. It's something bigger, right? Bigger than just a, a group of people. And aspect number three, the researcher tries to understand the object in a complete way, understanding the context, right? You see the context, you see the story, uh, maybe economic problem, a financial problem, uh, educational problem in an organization, in an administration, and something profound, and then you try to understand uh, all the situation and you study it. But of course, you don't have the obligation to find the solution because they are very profound and complex situations to be, to be studied, right? In this case, when you use a case study, it's something like a, a very profound discussion about it, uh, in which you try to understand what is happening and try to put in easier words, the context, what is happening in that specific, specific uh, situation. <clears throat> So we have the action research. When I was uh, 19, 18 years old, I used a lot action research. My teachers told me, Monica, you have to use the action research methodology. I want it. You, you're, going, you're going to give me the results in five months. Oh. Five months, yes, you're going to give me the answer in five months. So what is it? Now you have to solve the problem. Here in the case study, the name says you are just studying, trying to understand the situation and to give your opinion to the case. It's a case study. You analyze the situation, right? You are a critical person, but <clears throat> when you go to an, an action research, you have the purpose <clears throat> to solve the problem. The object is to, I, I put, I should put the other way. The objective is to identify and then solve the problem, okay? We use this a lot. I use this kind of methodology a lot when I was uh, a student at Modern Language course. I studied literature and we studied the problems in the classroom with students from seven until 15 years old. So in, you know that inside the classroom, we have many problems of uh, uh, teaching and learning. So I had to use a lot of actual res research to solve the teaching, learning process with foreign language students. In our case, we are Portuguese and our students have a great problem to to learn English, learn French. So the actual research is the best one. The researchers and participants will identify the problem and suggest possible solutions. So remember, if you pick up 
actual research, you have to find the solution. There is a great interaction between researchers and participants. Yes, this is so good because we have a staff. And most of the time we become friends, we become a, a great staff. The researchers and the participants, they give hands together in harmony, in harmony, and we try to, to answer that, that terrible situation. In my case, uh, it was inside the, the foreign language teaching process in our public schools in Brazil. Aspect number three, there is a great interaction, oh yes, I read, between researchers and participants. It's necessary to have an harmony between both sides because if not, the research won't succeed, won't go ahead. So the most important thing is to have peace, right? And harmony between both parts. <clears throat> Great, so number four, attention, attention. The object of the study are the problems that arise from social interaction. That's, that's my case. I can, just right now, it came to my mind, uh, a research problem. Why do teenagers in public school in Brazil face a resistance? to learn English. This is a problem from social, uh, social problems sociais. Um, the disadvantages of rich and poor in Brazil. So why do teenagers in Brazil face a difficulty to, to, to learn a second language? in public schools. This is a problem to solve. And I can give you the answer. You in India are lucky because you speak English, right? English for you is just like that, very easy. But in Brazil, no. To study English is very expensive, right? You have to go to a private school. It's very expensive. And most of the students, they do not have they cannot afford a private school. And uh, our university offer a free course, free English language course to our students, trying to help them. Other fact that contributes to the resistance of learning English is the family. The family does not give incentive to their children. They cannot see the importance of learning a second language. So we have to, to solve the problem. And my colleagues that work in modern language course, they most of the time work with action research. So and now, what is a quantitative approach? I know that you, some of you told me already what is the difference between a quantitative approach. Explain. Do you want to explain to me, anybody? Quantitative, as the name said. Yes, please. Uh, statistically quantifiable in nature, wherein this we actually compare uh, the impact of the independent variable on a dependent one or more than one. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. Yes, please. Prove the uh, solution of the problem through quantitative approach. Ma'am, you know, quantitative uh, research, they mainly entails the uses of either statistical analysis or formal models. But when it comes to the qualitative um, research, 
they need a data collection and data analysis that's a greater differences between both okay what's your name ma'am fatima draksha thank you fatima fatima yes fatima all right so let's see what is a quantitative approach so it looks for explanations in terms of numbers mathematics and statistics hey guys are you good in numbers because if you are good in numbers and statistics compare let's compare the economy of china with the economy of brazil during the years 2020 until 2022 so this is a quantitative approach let's try to see the number of immigrants that arrived in india from the last years yes i'm going to study the the number of immigrants indian immigrants from 2000 until 2022 and i'm gonna show graphics i'm gonna show statistics and the numbers and percentages right i need numbers i need numbers to prove my research so if you like this kind if you feel comfortable with this kind of research go ahead go ahead if you trust in numbers go ahead so this is what is the best for you so aspect number four it can be used to measure the potential of a market measure attitudes and behaviors yes you can measure measure whatever you want measure the number of teenagers who are using cell phones measure the number of people who are traveling uh, to india measure how is the economic market in bombay india measure measure if you want to measure numbers so this is the quantitative approach how to make a quantitative research well you have this what we call survey okay it is a very common way of collecting data it consists on asking a group of people to answer a form uh, we receive a lot of surveys here in my university but they come through email i think that the best survey is the one in which you go with your your paper right with your questionnaire and you are face to face to the person and you answer the questions you face the person i think the, the best thing is when you go to you go where things are happening but as i told you it's expensive uh you cannot go to brazil and china and india they are expensive places so nowadays we use uh internet to send the questions to to the interviewers and the second aspect it is common to measure information through you can use forms you can use questionnaires of multiple choice you can use uh, individual interviews. You, you ask the person, um, would you mind if I interview you? And if the person says, oh, okay, no problem. Yes, you can. So you go ahead. In my country, in Brazil, I, my doctoral degree, I had to go to primary school and observe the behavior of the kids who were learning the alphabet so i needed to ask permission i brought uh, that what we call in brazil is comité de ética e ethic committee it's a form it's called ethic committee in which the interviewer uh, signed saying that is totally okay 
uh, my presence in the school, my presence inside the classroom, and uh, observe the kids. So this is a quantitative research. I had to, to think about the number of children who had facility to understand the other number that had a little difficulty to understand how to, to write and to read. So this is a kind of quantitative research, okay? Finally, going to the end, characteristics of a quantitative research. Pay attention. It can be ambiguous. It aims to measure. It uses questionnaires. Data collect is very previously structured. Researcher and observer can no cannot interfere in the results and the results are presented in graphics and the charts. What do I want to say with can be ambiguous? Because your, your results, if you do not, um, if you do not specify, if you do not show very well, if you do not explain very well your statistics, statistics, it can become ambiguous. And me, when I'm reading, I can alone in my house say, well, I don't understand. What is this graphic about? The paragraph above or is it talking about the paragraph below? I guess there is something missing in this uh, statistic, in this table of contents. So be careful, right? Be careful with your information. Uh, you have to have all the co collect all the information before very well uh, structured. Uh, I cannot interfere when I went to the primary school. I did not interfere during the classes. I arrived in the classroom. I sat on the back of the class, just observing everybody. And I, I didn't have contact. Kids are always very, very nice, very warm. So during the break, the coffee break, I, the kids wanted to hug me, to smile, to talk to me. But most of the time, I tried to be invisible. <laughs> I tried to be invisible to the class, to the, to the class. And as I told you before, the results are presented in graphs and charts. Excel, right? The plans of Excel structure. Finally, to finish our course today, uh, I, I put here some examples. For number one, uh, I can study the intention of votes during the campaign for president of Brazil. So I can bring a graphic. How many people? In the northeast, voted in Bolsonaro. How many people voted in Lula? In the northeast, on the south of Brazil. Numbers. If I'm dealing with numbers, it is quantitative. Other example: the number of students who conclude or who concluded high school education in public schools in Brazil from this time until this time. You have to be specific, right? You have to. Um, close to tight the period of time you want to study. Well, that's what I brought for today, according to what uh, Wajahat asked me, right? And now I'm going to, to read what you put here. Um, Namaste, hello, good evening. Post, okay. Iran is postgraduate student. Kajal is postgraduate student too. Nupur, undergraduate student. Atribu, Atribu, undergraduate. Arshel, post, 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 undergraduate, post. Oh, Ira Ali is from Literature Review. That's great, Ira. 
Ivan Bowles, a good research involves strong literature evidence. That's true, Ivan. And a proper experimental or descriptive methodology. That's great. SAPNA, determine the purpose of a paper, collect information, organize the approach. Yes. If, I, I, I guess it should be very good. If you um, attended my classes during August or July, I don't remember very well, it was very good to be here again. So there is a connection between our last meeting with this meeting and the people who were there in here, they will understand easily what I am talking about. We can use the comparison study. 